Yeah. Um, and I'm actually, I'm actually going home. I don't thing? know how to stop and receive it or anything, though. Okay, end stream, end recording. See these two buttons? Which way? To, what order do I push them in? Does not matter. What because about Alyssa showing one, her images? It's going to be right here. Does she know how to do it? Alyssa, do you know how to use Teams? <laughs> I hope at least enough to do this. Okay, we'll find out, I guess. Okay, so is it... So wait, wait, where's... Okay, I see it. Okay! And here's the... Hey, Philly! How you doing? It's Philly Poo Fighter. It is Philly Poo Fighter. So we are here for God's War, and hopefully it's working. Um, and I guess I'll just check real quick. Make sure. This is the talented Alyssa McCarthy, who is, I guess, my newest employee. Technically, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, not just technically. Like, <laughs> absolutely, you're my newest employee. Um, though, I think Gray is like one day longer than you or something, so... It's like a, a week. He doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of seniority over you. Um, the, I mean, the, the uh, none of them have a real, uh, uh, a real long. Whisker. I'm going to go on to Discord very quickly and remind these guys that we're doing it. Yeah, let's just remember, I'm the most senior employee. Okay. I thought I was. No. You don't get to be an employee because you're the owner. I'm the. You're most... an owner. Well, now I am. Okay. But I'm the most senior employee. Okay. All right. So, who do we have in our? We have six viewers. Okay. Do you have the? Do you have the questions, Alyssa? That that we sent them. I have. I have them up here. Yes. Okay. Well, let's answer them. Let me increase my. I don't know my... how helpful. I don't know how helpful I will be. For most of these. But, uh, we didn't hire for you, hire you for your public speaking skills, so if you it, 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 don't worry if you bungle something. All right, all right. Where where am I starting? It's anywhere so you have... want. Okay, let's see. I can't I see think the, the, the one question, that. So. That I can be most helpful with is actually the funny pun about a uh, triolina, <laughs> the, okay. the pornographic. <laughs> <laughs> the pornographic. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I had a good chuckle when I saw Kent's uh, concept for that. Uh -huh. He actually very specifically called out that it wasn't supposed to look too uh... sexy. Well, doesn't she yeah. have the head of like a shrimp or something? Yeah, it's a shrimp. <laughs> yeah. I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed painting that one a lot because shrimp are pretty cool. Shrimp are pretty cool, but they are like they totally do not are not sexy, as far as I'm concerned. No. <laughs> they have a head full of feelers, and that's a turnoff, you know. Yeah. Um. <laughs> In fact, I just did an, a I just did a video today about the Migo, which are which are like crustacean things from Pluto, but they aren't really crustaceans because they're from outer space. But okay, so um, so talk to us about Triolina. Show the image you have of it. All right, let me. I'm just gonna share. Trilia is the source of all sea life for Glorantha, and so she is supposed to look like, you know, all sea life. There she is, hubba hubba, right? <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, thus she's a combination of different things. Um, mother of sea life. I guess if you're a merman, it probably looks better. So, 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 tell, talk to me about her rostrum. Um, the I I, I enjoyed Kent's design a lot because of mm -hmm. the very heavily shrimp inspired uh, stuff he pulled in. Um, I was pretty happy because the the color for that faction is that dark blue. Yes. And there's a so it makes it not look or totally place. like a shrimp, which is cool. Yeah, it's, I, I pulled in lobster. Well, there's the blue color. lobster. Is that what you're using, yeah. or more or less? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Those are supposed to be super rare, though, right? Yeah, they're yeah. I think it's like I don't even remember. They're yeah, they're pretty rare. It's like, like yeah, like, one in a hundred thousand or some huge number. Yeah. yeah, they're uh they're really neat though, and probably one of my favorite like color morphs of lobsters in uh -huh. general. So you wait, wait, you have multiple favorite color morphs of lobsters? Yeah, they're um chimera. They're they're like weird. Uh, 
half male, half female kind of thing. Um, they, they end up being half one color and half another. They're really crazy looking. Which would have been fun to do, but I'm not sure if that would have fit this. Freelina is supposed to be all girl. Yeah, so that so wouldn't... That she's wouldn't not happen. one of those. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's... Um, I mean, lobster is my favorite vegetable, so what can I say? My dad, who occasionally <laughs> tries to get me to eat vegan-ish, though, he, um, yeah. with, with complete failure, uh, and he, he's not vegan either, right? So I don't know why he wants me to, but he he always will will cave for lobster. So, um, yeah. Anyway, there she is, goddess of all sea life. What else do we? Uh, blue animals are not so rare with fish in the water. But there are there are on land. There's not a lot of land. Blue animals on land are mostly be, if they want to show off and display. Yeah, like birds. Birds or some reptiles or yeah. a warning color. But yeah, in the water you see more blue things. Or like blue. Po there's the blue poison frogs. They want to be blue, but you don't. But blue is a terrible camouflage on land. Yeah. Um, but but you get some fish that are blue, tuna and stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's not so. And of course, lobsters. The, the the reason that a lot of crustaceans are red is because if you go deeper than um, uh, fifty or hundred feet, all the blue light is absorbed, and so yeah, red looks like black, and it's cheaper pigment to make than black, so there's red. Um, I learned that when I was when I was a kid, it was a mystery. No one knew why, and say we don't know why deep sea things are red. And I thought maybe someone will know. And then by the time I was thirty, we knew, so that was kind of cool. Okay, so let us go on. Read another question. I can't see the questions. You have to read them for me, Alyssa. Uh, okay, I guess I can just start at the top. Also, uh, anyone that has questions in the chat, go ahead and type them in. Right now, Philly is ho hogging all of the uh, questions, and that's okay with me too, but you guys are welcome to, to horn in. So what questions uh, do you have that I have to answer? All right, the first one at the top is, all the art looks great except Zorak Zoran, who seems really strange for a great god. It looks like a sick, mad okay. zombie troll, but not a god. Zorak Zoran is literally supposed to have been burned and turned hideous by the sun when, when the sun went to hell, because he wouldn't retreat, and he is the troll god of undead. So I thought his look was pretty appropriate. Uh, he's not skinny, by the way. Uh, he's not small, I mean. If you compare him to the other gods, he's, he's, he's a big one. So he's a huge undead scarred troll thing, and I thought that was pretty appropriate for Zark's around myself, but uh, the whole point of my opinion is that it, it is my opinion, so Alyssa has to listen to my opinion, but if you don't like it, then you don't have to. But I wanted him to not look like a noble, brave warrior like Stormbolt. I wanted him to look like a terrifying undead horror that that ha was had no fear, had was like... And also, he's also got the feature that he is the only troll that actually controls some fire. So I figured that constant burning thing must have an effect on him too, Dilatari. So that's why I like, that's why I like Sorak Shiran. So anyway, that's my explanation for it. I hope that at least that makes sense, even if you wish I we'd gone a different way, but uh, we didn't. So next question. All right, next one. Uh, in the preview, the same map art is shown as in the first Kickstarter. The unannounced change of map during the first campaign was one of the major criticisms. So how do you address this? I'm not sure what change of map you're talking about. Change of the art style of the map? We we now have the art style that everyone liked yeah. better in the first Kickstarter, I thought, that we'd switched yeah. to. We switched because people said we want a different map, so we did. Um... And we have not switched maps in this, and we have a deluxe map, which is larger, and has extra pieces, which you can purchase if you like, but which is purely optional. So the Tony is, so the map, the, yeah, yeah, Tony is, uh, doesn't like changing the map. But yeah, we, we, uh, we are, the fact that we changed the map in the first campaign was like a sign of us responding to people, not of failing to respond to it. I mean, we, I thought, I mean, that's kind of the point, right? So we were, people said, we don't like the map. We made a better map, and now there's people saying they want the old map. We can only go, I mean, we have to go with the greater good when it comes to maps, as far as the greater good being who likes, which map do people more like. And uh, and now we at least we have two different maps for you. So, you, so if you, if you feel choice. that you don't like the map we have inside the box, there is the expansion map. And if you'd like the map inside the box, then you're cool, right? 
<laughs> the deluxe map is pretty sexy. I think it's easier to find areas on it because it's uh, uh, and it's nice and big. And the and of course the chaos rift is to die for on that map. It's really nice. And that I I think is that that's all you right, Eliza? Uh yeah, yeah. the like yeah. the mini plus me. The clawed thing that the comes claw. up. That, yeah, the claw is great. I, re yeah. I really like it. It makes the chaos rift look really cool. Much better than a whirlpool. Okay, next question. All right, next question. Uh, why is Lankor Mai holding a harp? I didn't know he was the Orlandi god of music. He is the singer of the laws of the gods. He explicitly is the Orlanthi god of music, believe it or not. So at least of, of the formal hymns and such. I know that sounds weird, but that's why he has it. Because you say, I didn't know he was the god of... That's not him. Oh, no. Oh, I don't think. I think that's Zabur. Um, oh, that was... No, I think that was him. Zabur is, like, gray. Is him? Well, where's the harp, then? It's I like... Thought, I thought you gave him a harp. Oh, is it by his side? Oh, yeah, it's, like, kind of underneath this side. Uh, yeah, so, in fact, when you say you didn't know he was the god of music, you have now learned something, because, in fact, he is the, uh... He is, the, uh, uh, uh... He is not just of music. He's of other things, too. But one of his jobs is music, which, after all, is a learned intellectual skill. So, yeah, there it is. Uh, my uh, uh, 30 years of learning lore, obscure lore about Glorantha paid off because I was able to teach you something new. That Lanker Mai is, is the singer of the gods and knows music. Okay, huh. next question. Where is the seventh head of Rasharana? It's secret, so you can't see it. It's under her cloak or something. And, or maybe it's off somewhere else doing something. It might be the, the, the marker that she puts on the map. But that was, I explicitly said, do not show... I told Alyssa not to show seven heads. That's the sixth head. Yes. I told uh, Alyssa not to show all seven heads because one of them's secret. Because they, they always have some weird thing like that that's secret. But I'm guessing that the seventh head is actually the one that goes on your uh, your moon track. And... Uh, and as, tr and you, as you march around the track, you bump into it. Uh, uh, she's the white moon. Right. Okay. Are we uh, moving on to the next question? If you think I've droned on about that one long enough, if you want more information about it. <laughs> All right. The claw, when the rift opens, is of the primordial chaos? Question mark. Yes, because primordial chaos, by definition, has no form we can comprehend. But when it enters the reality of Glorantha, it takes on form because it's bound somewhat by what's in Glorantha. And I thought that a giant claw that made no sense was a pretty cool way of showing it. And it's a lot more interesting than simply a, a, a whirlpool. or It could have been a mouth, like the Chaos Nest, but I wanted something new, so there it is. I also didn't want it to look like a Cthulhu thing. You know, and I think the claw does a great job of being horrifying and cool and not Lovecraftian. Do you want to show the, your picture of the claw? Yeah. I don't think you have a color one, do you? I it also looks real, it also had it also had two other constraints. It had to hold the disc for the uh, chaos rift, so you could put units in it. And uh, we thought at one time making it like a bowl, so you could dump just dump the units in. And then I realized that if you painted your units, you probably didn't want to dump them into a bowl to bounce off each other. So we have the flat disc. So it had to have a flat disc, uh, and uh, so. That was one of the that is that is uh, not yeah, the claw. Yeah, this yeah. is the spike. The spike, and so go back to the spike. Someone complained that the whirlpool on the spike was going the wrong direction, but it is in fact not. It is going the correct direction because the whirlpool on the spike goes the opposite direction of the storm room. Okay, move on. Okay. <laughs> All right. There it is. And you can see, if you actually had this for your hand, it would be, like, not easy to do anything with it except hold the disc, so it's it's perfect. Mm. The yeah, claw, well, my guess rough. is that, that the claw is, as something is coming in into chaos, that's when they become beings. 
as bits dribble out. It's like if you have a bag of um, uh, of lead and you're dribbling it into a pool of water, as the lead hits the water, it then takes form. That's what chaos is doing. It's an undifferentiated in chaos. When it hits reality of Guantha, it takes a form immediately. And uh, so, yeah, this is this might be a god forming from nothing. Maybe it's Kerjalk. Um, <laughs> so, uh, That's a neat way to, to, to look at it. Alrighty. Uh, There's actually like five or six different types of chaos in Glorantha that are defined by chaos philosophers. <laughs> um, Alright, next question is, though I like the idea of different shaped bases between the three categories of the new gods, I think the design of the secret gods the element around the base seems forced in some cases. Um, the, the secret gods are the ones that have the uh, the ring of things. Yeah. yeah. He I didn't think say the, which ones, ones he doesn't up. like. Let's look at them all and talk about them and see why they might or might not make sense. Yeah. And I'll take the wrath if they don't. All because right, that's what I'm here for. Pull up. There's, only, there's eight of them, so... First, let's start with uh, Zemela. Things up real quick. All right, you said Zemela first. Yeah, I'll do her first because because she's the one I'll take the hit on. Wait, is she the secret god? She's the secret god, yeah. Because Malkian's the war god and Zavor's uh, the me, magic god. Let me see what um, Black Eater. Zemela is with an X. Oh yeah. I know Casey. it sounds like it has a Z, but okay, it's an X. Greg I I likes X's, so X's show up a lot in his names. I like Z's, so name I make names I make up tend to have Z's in them. Um, so uh, I gotta pull this up in Photoshop. One moment, have it up. But so it's like, fun. there's like several different monsters that all have a Z in their name in uh, in hyperspace. I had to make up a bunch of alien names, so there were Z's. And Lovecraft liked Hebraic sounds. You know, like mm. Shagai and Yagoth and stuff. So that was his. <laughs> he thought that he sounded. He thought the Hebrew sounded creepy, which it kind of does, really. So uh, Hebrew and Latin are the two creepiest languages I know. So okay, so here is Zemela. Now she doesn't really have a ring around her because, like, she doesn't need it. She has the well to be her ring. Now, in the case of Zemela, I will sort of take the hit, because, but Zemela is the thing is she's a she's a saint of a god, and the invisible gods don't really fit into the god structure, so she's not really the goddess of secrets. She is just a saint that is important to them, and uh, and so, I mean, I made her be uh, Zemela, but she's not particularly secret. She's just they have to have a god, and this is where they crammed it in. Just like Malkion isn't really the god of war for them, but I had to. I, but the but the invisible god needs to get three gods like everyone else, so this is theirs. And uh, so there's the ring. This one I think, actually, as far as the rap goes, maybe I can take a rap for not really being a secret thing. But I think her base really looks good, because a well, it's 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 not forced for her at all. Ah! She's yeah, sorry, I'm popping the next one in so I okay. can have it ready. All right, pop it in. All right, um, the one I brought up was the Black Eater. The Black Eater with his pile Jeez. of skulls. Okay, so the Black Eater. Uh, the deal with the Black Eater is that because of the way his design, which is basically uh, the egg with the it's basically a mouth with some legs, uh, <laughs> he was he was he was kind of quite wide, which makes him short because the base can only be a certain width. So to make him tall enough to like hang with the cool kids, Alyssa gave him this base of skulls. And as the Black Eater that eats everything, skulls seem to make sense for us. So there's like a little ring of extra skulls at the base as a reminder. I admit, it's symbolic. I don't really imagine that he walks around everywhere with a ring of skulls orbiting him. But if you can't use symbolism and iconography, iconography with gods, I'm not sure where you're going to do it. So, okay, so there's the Black Eater. Unless yeah, the complaint think... is that the Black Eater is an obscure, weird god, which he absolutely is. He's very little no is known of him. Um, uh, he did make an appearance in my tabletop campaign of RuneQuest, but that doesn't do you guys any good. He is mentioned in Troll Pack, 
And the idea is that he is he is secret. He is the 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 the, dark, the the bad thing the trolls wish they didn't know about. And in fact, the only trolls that know about him in Grantha, and this is canon, is the mistress race trolls know about it, and they don't tell the dark trolls, and the troll can know about it because that's the reason that there's trollkin. This thing has deformed them. So there it is. There's the black eater. Let's go to the next one. See if I can defend it. Um, I think the next one that they they wanted to point out was hey, the gems. Okay, the so seem really the even. Well, they are really even because yeah. it's it's the symbol it's symbolic. But it, but look at it this way: she isn't randomly being found in a random chest. This is, is really a goddess of rare wealth. You know, I can completely imagine people placing gems around her so they're an even thing. And of crit, right, the, these aren't gems as you'd find them in the rock anyway. Look, they're cut gems. So wait, are is, is it a circular base for the uh, secret gods? I'm I thought assuming. it was hexagonal or something. Um, Tony might remember. Yeah, let's ask Tony. Yeah, no, no, it looks artificial here. Uh, absolutely, but I mean, like I said, it's like iconography. Maybe it, maybe he doesn't like the way it looks with the coins. Like the the coins are spilling out because she's coming out with her gift for you. But yeah, it's uh, it's a wor <laughs> it's a worship. You, pro you probably have to arrange the gems in a circle in order to summon her out of your treasure chest. It makes sense that you'd summon as really a former treasure chest, right? Okay. Also, she is sort of based on the awesome treasure chest we have in Evil High Priest, because we like them. Uh, it is a circle base, okay. And um, there's a terrible, terrible movie called uh, Island of the Living Dead, which I absolutely love and don't recommend to anyone. And in it, there's a treasure chest with a skull in it, that when they open the chest, the skull growls and turns towards them, and then they shut the chest, and then... I kept waiting for the skull to do something sometime else in the movie, but it never did because it was that kind of movie. Okay, mm. who do we have next? All right, those were the only ones they brought up, so okay. I don't know if you want well, to Well, I won't worry about the rest of them then. I will say that that if, if I can defend these, then I can defend any of them. But, I but yeah, this one I would have to say, they aren't random gems. They must have been placed there. <clears throat> for one thing, they're balanced on the narrow end. Almost someone hammered them into the rock. Okay. All right. The next question is. And of course, she is not inside the chest. She is emerging from the chest. She's being formed by the magic and the worship and the and the stuff. There's not. She doesn't have a body inside the chest. She's all crammed in, like you know, the genie from Aladdin. She just she's starting to appear as she comes through. It's like a gate. Okay. Next question. All right, next question. Which god slash goddess slash monstrosity sits on the throne in the inner hell image? Let's see it. I am looking for it. This is not one I've been familiarized with, so. I think I know what it is, but I want to see it before I explain it. Because it's it's a kind of arcane oh, bit of Glorantham lore. That I think the person who asked the question will really like hearing. Maybe Tony knows where it is. Hey Tony, do you know where the uh, art is for the um, for Inner Hell? Well, didn't you do new art for it? Or does it not look like the uh, old one at all? <laughs> well, tell, well, share it with Alyssa. Keeping so it, keeping it secret. <laughs> Well, I'll just tell you what the monstrosity that sits on the hell and whether or not they can find it. So, the monstrosity on the inner hell, the dark, spooky, spectral thing, that's the sun god. Because the sun god, when he was killed and went to hell, he was killed and went to hell and became the shade of the sun god. And is described in Orlanthi lore as a... as, as like a, a skeletal spooky monster and when he left hell as he emerged from hell the sun god burst back into flames to light up the world okay. there are also other reports that the sun god was bright in hell because it drove out the trolls but it might have been that it didn't take much brightness to do it because there's competing this i mean this the sun worshippers say that he burst into flames when he left the, the, uh, the, um, yeah, that's him. That's the sun god. 
the sun god is the monster in hell, which I think is is a pretty great bit of Glorantham lore. It is it, it is in effect the ghost of the sun god, because you know he's dead. By the way, for those for other information, is the gray zone here on the left on the on the six A player map? That's where um, your spirits go when you're a shaman and you discorporate. You go to the gray zone. So, uh, and at the very, very bottom of the inner hell is this amazing thing, and it is the Chaosium. And I don't mean the company, though, I maybe it's that too. But that's the place where the raw chaos from outside the universe feeds into Glorantha and is converted into energy to keep Glorantha going. So Glorantha, is, like Earth, is not a closed system. And there is, there is, the, so there's the Chaosium there in the inner hell, and there is the Sun God. Though I believe the sun god now, when he goes through hell at night, he still stays flaming and handsome. But when he was first sent there, by after his murder, he was a horrible monster. What about the outer hell? It's the outer hells. See, it's full of terrible things that is all. It's like things that are cast off and sad. Okay. Well, well, Alyssa, you drew the outer hell. Tell us about it. I I actually didn't do that one. You didn't do that um, one. Who did that? No, nope. I'm not sure. I'll ask Tony. Well, I told him to make it with, like, I said the sky was dark, it's full of monsters and things and weird stuff, and that, like, and there it is. I find it unbelievable. The same guy that did the Lux map, okay. There are weird things now. Well, where would you expect there to be weird things in, in a universe? I think outer hell, like, the outer hells are by definition somewhere that has terrible weird things, right? So, there we go. Okay. All right. Um, Next question. Anzadi and Avalon Tears, you don't have questions? Oh, we, we maybe have more questions from Melissa. There are two more. Uh, does awesome. the new map have different areas and or different rules? <coughs> the new map does not have different areas or different rules. It is just bigger and with different art. Fancier. It's fancier. <laughs> we didn't want... We didn't want the way that the game worked to be different on the big map and the little map. But because that, I mean, that would change strategy and stuff. And if you want to mess with that kind of thing, I recommend you get your felt tip marker and make up your own areas because that's how you do it. Is that the last question, Melissa? Uh, there's one more. Uh, if, uh, if, is it Gera? Gera is the black moon and Zaytanera is the white moon. Why is Natha a black moon and Rasharana a white moon in the God's War? That was their name during the, uh, during, during the, uh, before time began. Just like Sedenia was the name of the red moon before time began, and it's not now. Their name, they changed, they were, okay, so the moon, Pantheon, everything in the moon except for Anila, whose name didn't change, <coughs> were completely destroyed or at least killed and illuminated from the cosmos. And when they came back, a thousand years later or more, they had different names and were, to an extent, different entities. And that's why that's why there's different names for them in uh, in the modern Glorantha and in the uh, in the God Time, because they, they they changed names and personalities to an extent. So, for example, in in the uh, in the modern times, almost no one believes in the Black Moon. And the and the blue, the white moon is highly controversial in that at least half the people that believe in the white moon think that the white moon will destroy all the other moons and and save the world from the horrors of the moon. Of course, the moon guys think the white moon's their bud. So, who is right <laughs> remains to be seen. Everyone agrees that the white moon is the moon of peace, though. But some people think it'll be the moon of peace because literally everyone will be dead, and, you, and that's peaceful. Are there any miniature design that we haven't seen yet? Uh, what have, have we not revealed anything, Tony? I, I think every I think everything's been revealed at this point. I think at this point everything is revealed. There's some there's some counters that aren't revealed, but that's not really what you're asking about. So, yeah, everything there. Alrighty. All right, so that's it for questions that we got ahead of time. Okay, um, so if you guys don't have other questions, 
because I'm going to make Alyssa stay here for the rest of the hour, we can talk about upcoming projects or more things about this project or any topic you are interested in. But you will have to type in the questions. And if you don't, I'll make Alyssa show you images from an upcoming project. <laughs> so why don't you get ready with the, uh, the Nothronicus? All righty. While we're waiting for questions. So, uh, Zaytanera may well be the new white moon, but there isn't a white moon. Like I said, she's, it's, it's debatable. I mean, I would say probably 70% of the Goranthas don't believe in the white moon, and of the ones that are left, like, 20, like, like, half of those don't know about the Lunar Empire. It's weird. What's the deal with animistic spirits? Okay, so the idea behind, um, in Glorantha is that there's a group of people called the Sun Chen. Uh, okay, so the deal, the, the reason that they are different from gods is simply that they're weaker. That's it. There's, it's like, it's a difference of scale, not of ability and power. When do we plan to open the Pledge Manager after the campaign ends? Uh, very simply, the campaign will end, I guess, tomorrow. And then we are, we can't open the Pledge Manager for about two weeks. Um, because that's, that's, the Kickstarter takes that time to, uh, uh, check out, check all the, dock all your uh, uh, credit cards. Uh, sometimes she has to try to, they dock up, try to talk, dock her more than once because the first time failed. They tot up the money. I assume they hang on to it and get a little bit of interest and that's a more perk for them. And then finally in a couple weeks they release the money to us and they tell us who actually paid and who didn't. And then we can open the Pledge Manager because we know who actually is there. Alright. You're very interested in zombie ducks. Oh my gosh. Uh, please no. Uh, so here we go. Here is... here. Is, this is from our game, upcoming game called Dinosaur 1944, in which you are uh, uh, probably, at the start at least, army guys fighting an island where mad scientists are using time machines to bring forth dinosaurs. And the dinosaurs have bosses, and this is the uh, the first... Boss. Okay, so Cold Swim. How much for Spork Friend? How long? We did a giant penguin expansion. It's coming this year. It's uh well it has giant penguins in it at least. It's the it's uh it's the final onslaught. And then how much further do we think we'll take Glorantha and Cthulhu Wars? Okay, so our plan is for Cthulhu Wars is that that was the final final onslaught. We might add other things just on one-offs, like we have something for April 1st this year, like we always do, but it's not like a giant expensive thing, it's like a little fun thing um, that uh, is still pretty cool. Uh, and as far as Glorantha, I think that I am really happy with what we've done for Glorantha so far, and that we will probably let it sit there unless there is a vast demand in the future. Um, and we will be uh, we will be content with the um, what we have. So that means probably no zombie ducks from us in the near future. Unless we have another reason for it. We also, we put penguins into two things. We not only have penguins in Cthulhu Wars now, we put them into 8-bit uh, attack. So this is not the This is a kind of creature called a Segnosaur, which are super bizarre dinosaurs that when I was growing up we didn't know about. They are theropods who are probably herbivores uh, and appear, apparently use giant claws for something. I mean, pro defense is doubtless one of the things they use them for, but, uh, but, but, you know, they probably use them for something else too. So here's our Sagnosaur, and because they're kind of goofy looking, um, we had it be the first boss. Um, so this is the first boss you face when you're the army guys, and you make it through the first invasion wave of dinosaurs and other things. And by the way, though we call it dinosaurs, 1944, not all the not all the creatures are dinosaurs. There's like elasmosaurs and sharks and all kinds of things. So, so this is the, the first boss. Now we're gonna look at the second boss. I hope. Yep. Give me one second. Why is Shargash the best god? Shargash is the best god because he is the patron god of my son, Lincoln. Um, he really likes Shargash. I think because Shargash is murderous and at one point was claimed to have killed everyone. Does Dinosaur 1940 have penguins? It has the ancestors of penguins in that it has flightless, flightless uh, feathered animals, so that counts, right? So, for example, here is a creature which is related to penguins. 
Um, and this is, uh, this is a Brontosaurus. And I'm so happy when, as of late, they've decided that Brontosaurus is, in fact, again, a valid dinosaur name. Because I think it's way better than a Patasaurus. So this is our Brontosaurus. And right now we're fighting the good fight because the Brontosaurus... Is, I want it to be to scale, and that means it's, like, really big. Like, if you put a human on this scale, its head will go up to her back knee, which means this is a large figure. But, uh, so we'll see if we can pull it off, but we're going to try to. So that's the monster. He's the, yeah, this is the yeah, second yeah. boss, because although they're super colossal and very impressive dinosaurs and iconic, they are not... Uh, there is another dinosaur that, for me at least, is the most iconic and that is the obvious final boss. And if you say, oh, that's so obvious, all I can say is Mia Culpa. But this has been a favorite dinosaur of mine for a really long time. It's loading. And there it is. Let me pull him over here. Tyrannosaurus. And he's big, too. Uh, not as big as the uh, uh, Brontosaurus, but faster. And in fact, in fact, Tyrannosaurus. A lot of people don't realize this. They were actually built quite a bit for for their size, the the weight of their bone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Philly Fighter asks. Yes, Brontosaurus and Apatosaurus are considered different things. They have Brontosaurus bones and they have Apatosaurus bones. I recognize your name. I just I just didn't want to. I was hoping you wanted to keep it our little secret. Um, uh, but and and. Uh, they decided that the that the brontosaurus bones and the patasaurus are different enough to be different species. One of the issues with the brontosaurus bones is that they didn't find a skull for it, and that's actually a problem with uh, sauropods is they don't si they don't find um, skulls very often for them. Um, so they took a skull from like twenty miles away and fit it on and said, "This is the brontosaurus." And of course, that was terrible because it was like it was a camerasaurus skull. So then they said, oh, they just took an apatosaurus bones and put a camera skull on it. But then they decided lately that, in fact, while the the skull's still wrong, because it's from the wrong thing, the bones are not apatosaurus. So there we go. And no, the dinosaurs are not Japanese. The, no, they're, they're mad scientists. We do not say what country they're from, but they do have Yithian gear because there's a boss pack that actually is going to have uh, Yithians and other Cthulhu things as part as some of the bosses, so uh, so we have as neutral bosses. So there's mad scientists who who uh, brought them forth from the past, and the reason that it's mad scientists and not surviving um, uh, dinosaurs is because I wanted it to be okay to kill them because I would never want to shoot a dinosaur because they're awesome, but if they're being brought through to our world in vast, unstoppable numbers, then it's okay. And yes, we absolutely have a stegosaur. The stegosaur is, there's, uh, okay, so there's four different categories of uh, prehistoric monsters in the game. There's, um, uh, there's bosses, which is showing you the bosses, and there are uh, major enemies, greater en enemies, and there are lesser minions, lesser enemies, and there are, there are player heroes. So the Stegosaurus is a major enemy. Unless Alyssa decides that she wants to make it a Kentrosaurus, which is which I'm always tempted to go back and do because Kentrosauruses look pretty cool too. Yeah, they do. And Tony will like them because Kentrosaurus are the smaller. So <laughs> yeah, Avalon Tears is sad about the Mythic Games generic thing not working out. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sad about it. We, we immediately gave them permission to use our stuff. You know, we were all aboard with that. I mean, Cthul I mean, Cthulhu Wars versus Zombicide versus Batman. I mean, what's not to like? So it's too bad. I'm not sure. I, 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 apparently, the problem seems to have been in part that they made it kind of confusing or you had to double dip on things. I don't know. Um, in the past, Monolith has proven, or Mythic has proven pretty smart. Wasn't there a call? Yes, there was a Call of Cthulhu campaign in which the Migo made a portal to the Dinosaur Days, and in fact, I uh, developed that campaign. All the dinosaurs, all the dinosaurs are based on. Okay, they're in the first place. Some of them aren't dinosaurs because we have like giant sloths and stuff because the time portal can go anywhere. But all of them are based on real prehistoric creatures, uh, so there are no weird ones. However, some of them might have. Implants. You won't see the implant because I want to have cool dinosaur figures, but the but but the, we'll talk about it in it. And there are um, there are uh, they they get conditioning and other and other things. 
So we don't have any. I didn't. We didn't make up any fake dinosaurs for it. If that's what you're asking, these are all. So so all of these people, all these dinosaurs, um, you can um. Yeah, yeah, I was the editor on that campaign. So so uh, so all these dinosaurs, you you'll be able to use in other purposes. However, I will say that, for example, in this one, there's the palm tree. Obviously, Tyrannosaurus never saw a palm tree because there was none around. But on the tropical island, the game takes place in, there's palm trees, so there you go. And if you really want to use it in the ancient campaign, you can decide that that's a cycad instead of a palm tree because they had cycads. Or, I guess, a tree fern, which don't look that different from palm trees. <coughs> so no matter what you're yeah. covered, you got the dinosaur. So we're going to... So we have... 12 hero dinosaurs that you can play. Well, they aren't all dinosaurs, like I said. Um, but they're all prehistoric monsters. And then they're, they have the... And, of course, the... Now, there's also army bosses to fight the dinosaurs. And the army bosses are generally vehicles. So there's, like, a Sherman tank and stuff. So so the, the ultimate army boss is a Sherman tank. And the ultimate dinosaur boss is the T-Rex. So a T-Rex versus the Sherman tank makes sense as, uh, as, a, as opposition. Anzadi's Twitch is freezing. It's because it's the curse of the zombie ducks. You shouldn't have mentioned zombie ducks. That that is that's killer. So Alyssa, what are your plans for the uh, Sherman tank boss? Oh jeez, I'm not sure. I haven't even thought about it. Are you going? Are you going to go out and buy a band-aid model and put it together? I, I I probably will do something along those lines. Yeah. Let's see. Easiest way to do that, to get good reference. Super important. <laughs> it's pretty easy to get good reference on Sherman tanks. It's easier yeah, to get accurate reference than it is on T Rex because everyone likes to jazz up the T Rexes. But here we are, and I was so happy that before our game came out, we found out the T Rex in fact did not have feathers because that makes me glad. Yeah, I kind of like the feathers. Not like really floofy feathers, but just some little spiky ones. But well, he could have had. They could, he he could have had filaments for display. Um, yeah, so I'm, cryogenic I'm ass to... is there a glorantha god relation to dinosaurs? So there are dinosaurs in glorantha, okay, and there are multiple different um, sources of dinosaurs in glorantha. So like glorantha didn't have a Mesozoic period, right? But so one of the sources of dinosaurs in glorantha are dragon newts that try to mature themselves to dragons the wrong way. And instead of becoming dragons, they become hideous, monstrous things. So that's one of the ways we get dinosaur-like creatures in Glorantha. But there are others. Like, if you go to uh, Pamotello, there's simply giant reptilian monsters that are a lot like dinosaurs and overlap with dinosaurs, and that's, they just, like, that's where those things live. Um, and then during the, uh, during the Second Age, there was mad scientists who tried to make monsters, and uh, effectively some of them were dinosaur-like. And there's also the mother of monsters whose offspring often look dinosaur-y, but they have, like, tentacles and stuff. So there's... So, like for example, of uh, um, like one, like uh, some of the dinosaurs tried to mature themselves in a, some of the dragon eggs tried to mature themselves in a dragon egg to be full size at once, and the resulting monster is this mindless thing with a long neck and a long tail, and it's very big in the middle, and it's a brontosaurus. Then there are some that simply got interested in learning non-dragon magic and kept doing more and more regular magic, human magic, and these things eventually mature and are magical, but they're like duckbills. So they, so they're, so the duckbills in Glorantha are intelligent and have magic, uh, and then there's there's some that some people said, hey, we can take these dinosaur these dinosaur dragon new things and breed them to make a war machine. So they made triceratopses, and uh, finally, <clears throat> any of the other types of dinosaurs sometimes realize their fate and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so far from being a dragon, it's gone wrong. So they spin an egg around them and try to mature to something better, and they come out as a pterodactyl, which is you know. At least you can fly, so it's better than being a, uh, you know, a brontosaurus. So that's the idea behind it. Anyway, that's the some of the backstory of dinosaurs in Guarantha. But these aren't those dinosaurs. These are uh, Earth dinosaurs brought back by Yithian technology. Um, well, I mean, we do always have overlap, so I suppose you could, in theory, grab a uh, the darkness goddess and put her in uh, 1944. The rules are pretty different because Dinosaur, Dinosaur 1944 is a co-op game if you're playing as, the, you know, as just one side. But you can also um, play it player versus player where, where you and one or two of your buddies are the army guys and 
your other buddies are the dinosaurs and you fight each other or vice versa. So it's either player versus player or it's uh, um, co-op. And Lincoln says, show the other dinosaur game. What is the other dinosaur game, Tony? I, why am I not remembering it? Alyssa, do you know what he's talking about? Have I forgot? Dino Deal. What? Dino Deal. Oh, yes! <laughs> Two Minute Dino Deal. Let's show him that. This is going to come out really soon. Like, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so this is a game. People, someone was saying that our games cost too much. This is not a game that costs too much. It's, it's, it's called Two Minute Dino Deal. Because it literally takes two minutes to play. Okay, and it takes exactly two minutes to play. It takes a little more than two minutes to finish the game because you have to add up points at the end, which can take as long as 30 seconds. I know. I hope that's not a deal breaker. But in Dino Deal, you have your time scoop, and you're grabbing up dinosaurs from the past. And the whole thing, it's in, it's in like, the box is, like, the size of a... Of a of a box of cards, I think. To, no, it's bigger than that because we have some tokens it's, in it. I think it's about five, five by seven or a little bit. Yeah, bigger. it's like the size of a tarot card or something, or a little bigger than that. So it's a little tiny box, and it's cheap and it's fast, and kids can play it. And uh, and you're sitting there and you're you're bidding on dinosaurs and you're selling the dinosaurs, and uh, it's a two minute dino deal. So if you want a Peterson game that costs less than twenty bucks, we got one for you, and it's even got these cool dinosaurs. See. And all these dinosaurs, the 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 pterosaur, the brontosaur, the stig, the the uh, stegosaur, the ceratosaur, and the T Rex all appear in uh, the other game. But I think we don't actually have a pteranodon in uh, Di Dinosaur Nineteen Forty Four. We have an Asdarchid though, and we have little pterodactyls. Yeah, I don't I don't remember what they're called, but. So we have we have pterodactyls in uh, in uh, Dinosaur 1944, and we also have okay. as, and what we also at, ter, the pterodactyls are like little monsters. There's like a lot of them, so they could they could they could be whatever kind of pterodactyl you like the most, right? I'm kind of rooting mm -hmm. for one that has a tail because those look very weird. But uh, oh, that's the one with the weird teeth. Yeah, there's a lot of them have weird teeth. But then but then yeah. there's also the um, there's an as Darcha, the Quetzalcoatlicus or Watsagopterus or something. One of those things. That's one of the player characters. Let's see if there's any other. So there it is. So, uh. It how like does the game. sky work? Okay, so here, here's the way the sky dome works, Anzadi. Um, you walk to the edge of the map, and there is the crystal dome of the sky. And you. Like find a hole, find a door, or you break a hole and you walk through, and then you simply walk up on the outside of the crystal dome up to the top. Then you can walk down this. And there's a hole in the top because there's a hole where the um, uh, where the moon comes through. Actually, all the stars are holes in the sky, little fortresses where uh, they're defending against the the darkness. And so you can fall through any of the spots where there's a sky, where there's a hole if you want, if you want to get back to Earth fast that way. We didn't have that in the game because, like, it would kill you. So you have to walk back to the other side of the of the Crystal Dome and go through there. And that is how you... Uh, walk. It's just like in the medieval times, they knew that there was the Crystal Dome that covered the world. So Garantha has that Crystal Dome, too. Well, maybe it's not Crystal and Garantha. It's solid ether. I don't know. So there it is. And there's two minute dino deal. Our di our game will be out really shortly. Has has all the art been done for it, Tony? Oh, oh yeah, that's been done. We're good to go. All we got to do is manufacture the cards and the and the cardboard. And look at that, a Peterson game that you can carry in your pocket. I hope you guys are off to China. There it is. <laughs> and it's also a good game if you're waiting for the other guys to show up for the big game. You can pull this thing out and play it literally in two minutes. So, and the reason it's two minutes is because what you do is you take someone. You have to have someone with a smartphone or a stopwatch. Usually, a smartphone is easier to get. So you take your smartphone and you put it on the map with the uh, the timer function on it. And every thirty seconds, you change the way you bid. But it's a fixed way. It's always the same way, so you don't have to remember. Well, you have to learn it the first time, but then it's after that. 
then when everyone's finished placing their counters, you add it up and get your points. And so one of the things, basically the way it works is that when you're placing your counters, that the value of the counter is higher the longer you wait. So in the first 30 seconds, your counters are worth one, second 30 seconds are worth two, third they're three, fourth they're four. And so if you wait longer, then your counters are worth more. But if you wait longer, then then Alyssa got the good dinosaur and you didn't get to have it because you waited too long. So <laughs> you have to kind of go you have kind of kind of go early enough so you get the good things. So and you only have four counters you can spend. Okay. He wants to see Dino Deal cards, sure, Alyssa. Let me. Let me see if I can find them. I did all of the art. Now, you don't hold the cards in your hand. Together. The cards are always on the table. And every time you play, it's a different bunch of cards you've dealt out. So every game is a little different. I presume Melissa has access to these cards. Yeah, I'm um, <coughs> digging them out. There's what, like 50 cards, Tony? I think. A filler game. No, this is a great game. I will <laughs> say that it's, it has two solid minutes of strategy. And like, and sometimes you want a game that you can finish. Like, like we used to play Guillotine, waiting for the other guys to show up with the game. But Guillotine can go up to forty-five minutes, so it, sometimes it was a little too long. But Dino, two-minute Dino Deal. Dino Deal is a totally different game from the from Dinosaur Nineteen Forty Four. Dinosaur Nineteen Forty Four has like plastic figures and maps and 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 character advancement. 18 of each card. There it is. So I guess that makes it have 54 cards. Let me see if there's a... Alyssa can't find them. She's deleted them all off the hard drive, Tony. <laughs> no, I uh, I don't play around with... I just make the, the, the assets and then they get put together. I'm seeing where they're at. When she was trying to save it to the, uh, to the cloud drive, she erased everything. All right. Oh, boy. Which one should I open? Uh, we'll start with the uh, ones that show you getting dinosaurs. There's four different kinds of cards. There's the ones that give you dinosaurs. Oh, no, there's three kinds. There's the ones that give you dinosaurs, the ones that let you convert things into other dinosaurs, trade them, and there's the ones that let you cash in dinosaurs. <laughs> Tony's yelling at me. I gotta switch my screen sharing, though. Oh, jeez. Teens, why are you so bad? Well, we used to use Skype, so... Alright. What does your button say on your hat? I guess you have a bunch of buttons on your hat. Like, oh, I've got lots of buttons. Okay, so this is one of the trade cards. If you have this card and you put a marker on it, then depending on whether the marker says 1, 2, 3, or 4, you can trade 1, 2, 3, or 4 Tyrannosauruses for uh, Brontosauruses. And this does the same thing except, yeah, these... If you scroll down, you get the better ones. There's some that you, yeah, see, like, that, that gives, this you, you can get, trade a Triceratops in for two Pterosaurs, so that's, like, a, a good deal. You're gonna, that, well, we're hoping to get Dino Deal into, um, uh, all of the stores, um, but you can also always get it on our website, yeah. And it'll be on, it'll be on, uh, Amazon and everything, too. Lucky Haster made it. Haster, we're talking about two-minute Dino Deal, but if you have any question. Are you going to get as any yet unrevealed pretty dice? I'm talking for the God's War. Uh, well, I, we have the, there's the purple battle dice, and then there's the uh, Chaos Rift dice. So those are the two kinds of dice we're getting. And I, there's no other dice that we've been talking about. I'm not sure what other dice we'd use for... Uh, okay, these just give you this, this dinosaur. These are the ones you just earn a dinosaur. Yeah, so, for example, uh, say that you... Say, go back, go up one. So, on this one, if you put a marker on this, you get a sorry, Triceratops and a, uh, a, a T-Rex. And then you could... Tr then one of the other things you saw there was a T-Rex you could trade for Triceratops. So, you could use this to get a Triceratops and a T-Rex, then use the other card to train that T-Rex for another Triceratops, and you have two Triceratops. So, pretty dice for any... Okay, I mean, oh, yes, we have wonderful dice for the uh, Dinosaur 1944. Because we have dice that has pictures of dinosaurs on it. And this is where you cash in. It's pretty obvious. Your Pterosaur gives you a buck. <laughs> <clears throat> How many boxes of Dinosaur 1944 do we need to buy? <laughs> well, while you're welcome to buy as many copies of Dinosaur 1944 as you want, I would suggest that if you really want to have little plastic dinosaurs to trade with, your best bet is to go to the toy store and buy a big bag. 
for like five bucks. That's what I did for my. Uh, so, so there it is. So um, for my playtest version, but it's kind of lame because my dinosaurs always fit. This is the back of the cards. See, there's a stopwatch and the dinosaurs. I like this card back a lot. That's, that's this is actually time, time scoop. This is time scoop, isn't it? Yeah, that's time yeah. scoop. This is, this is buyer the buyer cards. Card. That's where you're getting money for dinosaurs. So they says, "I gotta get me some of that," and they want to give you a uh, give the money. Oh, by the way, uh, great story. So there is a uh, there's there was a uh, a game I did back for a long time ago for a company we'll not name, and on the front cover, go back to the picture of the guy giving the money. There was a guy that was that that was holding two revolvers on someone else in a it was a it was in a western game. And the guy had a revolver in his right hand and a revolver in the other hand, which was actually drawn to be a right hand as well. So he had two right hands. That was pretty great. Okay, so I have a question about the God's War. Um, he, your father, who is a history teacher, commented how Sumerian, the Earth Titans, and Storm Brothers worked. Look, this was this is absolutely intentional. <laughs> That's by my design. I uh, I wanted the Earth Titans to look really ancient and and primeval, and that's where the Sumerian stuff came from. And uh, and the Storm Brothers are are straight off of the. Uh, I guess I thought of the uh, um the Lamasu things as Assyrian more than Sumerian, but I guess they're Sumerian too. The winged bulls, yeah. So yeah, Lucky Haster, you are correct. Your your dad is absolutely correct. I'm I'm thrilled he he picked up on that because I, I I try to do this kind of background for a lot of the stuff I do, and um and of course I think even if people don't understand that um that the Earth Titan is based on a Sumerian king, the, it picks it, somewhere in the back of their head in their body they get that what's going on. Dino Deal is yeah, it's really fast. It's really it's. Yeah, uh, I don't know what we say the official ages are, but if they can count, they can play it, you know. So uh, there's no, you, you don't have to read any rules. Well, you have to read, someone has to read the rules, right? But a seven-year-old can play it if you want to. Were there, yes, there, there are art themes between the gods. Like, Earth is supposed to be the old, weird faction, so the Earth faction has these ancient things. So the Earth Queens, <coughs> um, you may have noticed that they look like Cretan, maybe? Ancient Crete? Or, uh, or or ancient Hellene, like maybe not quite as old as the Sumerians, but it could be Sumerian. So they like ancient, and the uh, their monster, uh, their hero, the uh, uh, Mabel, the uh, behemoth, is made to look like an like a crude ancient mammal, half come out of the reptile thing. It's like it's like weird, <coughs> and then then um, so Earth, all of Earth is supposed to look like like formal and c civilized and ancient. Um, I mean, sea is aquatic, yeah. Uh, moon is supposed to is supposed to um, look kind of like bipolar, like there's multiple different things going on, and there's a little trace of that in the sun god. The sun god is supposed to look the most civilized <coughs> and elite, and like Chinese or Roman or Egyptian, like high high culture. So all everything has art themes, and chaos, of course, is empty and hollow. Oh, here we go. Here's another game. So this game is coming pretty soon. Um, also, it's completely finished. It is going... And look, there's dice! Who wanted the dice? Check it out. Look, dice. And you can see these are not simply D6s because there's like an 8 and a 10 on them. So in this game, you are a cultist trying to go through the rituals to be high in the cult. And the problem is that this makes you go crazy to be high in the cult. So you're trying to not go too crazy because if you go too crazy, then they just like to have to lock, have to lock you up. You know, so you don't want to be so crazy you're locked up. You want to be the kind of crazy, like Dr. Frankenstein crazy, not like Renfield crazy, if you get my reference there. So, uh, this is it. And do you have a picture of the brain? I do. I'm pulling up. Okay, so so this is the map. This is the game map. This is your brain on Cthulhu. Okay. And uh, that is not my idea, but I'm happy to steal it and pretend it's mine. So what you're trying to do is when you, you roll the dice... And you have to assign the dice to the areas of your brain, and you're tr and you have a target. Like for the four brain here, you're trying to get 26 points exactly. And if you can exactly get 26 points, then you're cool. But probably you can't because otherwise the game would be too easy. And uh, 
And some of the dice are positive and some are negative. And uh, yes, it's a roll and write made by Peterson Games, not designed at all by me. Um, but like Lincoln says, some hacks that uh, that we know. The same hacks that did Startropolis, actually. I said it was double points if you got 26, right? Didn't I say that? But I, just, but I said it's hard to get 20. I think, do you only get double the 26 so you get 52, or do you get double all of your points? The, he sent me a copy. Um, Tony sent, uh, the, the, so I could look it over, and I got the copy, and I was all set to go, and they didn't send the dice. So that made me sad. It is the map of the brain on Cthulhu. You can see that the blue one's hard to get to exactly 18. So you're rolling these dice, and you have to put... 18 points of stuff in there, but maybe you can't do it. So, I don't know. I, uh, let's see. It's paper, so you so uh, you can you can la I would I would laminate it if I was worried I was going to run out of things. But there's a big there's a pad of them. But there's yeah that's right. There's a dry erase upgrade. You could laminate them. Um, you know, I think what you should do is buy new copies of the game. Every few games <laughs> from us, um, and then while you're doing it, just throw in. Oh, as long as I'm getting that, maybe I'll pick up a couple boxes of the uh, the God's War buildings because you never know when you might need some of those. So, so there it is, a roll and write from Peterson Games, and it's about your brain. Uh, Lincoln is kind of a fan of China in that his favorite food is Chinese, but he's not always a fan of the way China um, does things with us. Oh, yeah, yeah, the copy of the game didn't send the dice. So, it's possible they didn't have the dice in the sense, so I wasn't able, I was all set to play it for you guys in the video and I couldn't because I didn't have the dice. <laughs> so there's Unlocking Insanity. How about Potions of Profits? Let's look at that. That's coming pretty soon, too. Right? Yeah. So I'm, what I'm showing you here is a bunch of small, light, inexpensive games that Peterson Game is doing. So you you know that we are walking... Oh, it's all after 8 o'clock. So we'll just quick show them Potions and Profits. So in Potions and Profits, you work for a gigantic, heartless, international pharma, pharmaceutical firm that makes magic potions. Do other people try to... Par people try to partner with us to make games all the time. Um... <laughs> we have made several games from other people, but we have made more games <coughs> from these guys than anyone else. <coughs> okay, so so these are some of the cards, illustrations from Potions and Profits. And one of the things that happens on Potions and Profits is that some of the ingredients are ingredients that get you in trouble. Because you're using bits for them that... that um, that make people sad, like you, like you're grinding up unicorns or something, right? Or kittens, and then they say, "Oh, you're bad." Okay, there's crab juice, famous for Homer Simpson, and so like tears. Here's one tear, kitten tears. This is an ingredient. Well, obviously, if you're if you're putting kitten tears in your ingredients, there's probably guys, people picketing you, you know, and so it's not so good. So you better be worth a lot of money. On the other hand, if you're using goblin glands, I can uh, let me uh, let me pull that one up. Goblin. Oh yeah. So ads. so here. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So we don't we don't want to see what the goblin glands are, and we don't want to know where from the goblin they come. But the bottom line is, no one no one is worried about there being less goblins. In fact, that's kind of a, like a plus. So you're working for the potion corporation, trying to sell your things and and make your money, and trying not to get too much bad press while you do it. So. Yeah, let me pull up the logo. Why not? Banshee whale. I think you got it up there. Potions and Profits. There it is. So next time you're mad at at, at, uh, at Lily or one of the other pharmaceutical things, just think of Potions and Profits and you can play it instead and be happy. I hope. And Banshee Whale. Banshee Whale. Anzadi, if you want us to do a game based on penguins, you must create the game yourself and send it to us to evaluate, and then and only then will we be able to reject, reject it for you. The hyperspace role playing game is still happening, but it's not going to be very, it's not very close. So, hey Lincoln, how many pages of it did you write today? 
<laughs> Let me guess. I'm gonna guess zero. Am I am I right? Crab juice. So for some reason, Alyssa has crab juice as her emblem. It's uh. I find it. I found it funny. It is pretty funny, actually. And you've seen the you've seen the Simpsons episode where it features, right? Most likely. I well, have, I, Homer Simpson going through well. a drive-through and he says, "I'd like I'd like a Coke," and they go, "All we have is RC cola and crab juice." And he goes, Ugh! and Then he goes, "Well, I, I guess I'll have a crab juice." <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so uh, Hyperspace is a role-playing game like Call of Cthulhu or D and D, but it's not based off D and D. It's its own system. What was that? Dragonfire. Yeah, it's Dragonfire. That's an adorable dragon. He has blue eyes, or she. I don't know. What is it? it? Is this a little boy I, dragon or a little girl dragon? Or does it not know? can use your imagination. Okay. <laughs> I know how to find out. <laughs> no, no, no. My technique is simple. Whenever there's a creature like that, I ask one of my granddaughters what the gender Thank of the creature is. And they always know. They, there's never any doubt. That works. It does seem, it does seem to match. Um, if it's repulsive, it's always a boy. And if it's cute, it's always a girl. But, but I mean, <laughs> they are like nine years old, so they're entitled. So there is that. Final questions before we sign off. Oh, is it Mountain Dew, Tony, not uh, RC Cola? I just assumed it had to be RC Cola. But uh, what type of theme would a hyperspeed RPG have? What it has is you and your other the, the play, people who are playing, not you, the people who are playing the game have a spaceship and they're effectively effectuators or troubleshooters. And they travel, and the spaceship is like a main character for them. Okay? And they're going through space doing things. And uh, they have they might have battles in the space. And uh, uh, let's see, does the gods pack each have figures besides the gods? Uh, the ogres are in the magic pack, and the zombies are in the um, the war pack. I'm not sure if all of them have packs. Oh, oh, what, what's the ones for the magic pack? I mean, the 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 secret pack. War has zombies. And ogres are, are magic, I think, because that has that's cacodemons. But what about what about the uh, secret though? Like, can the secret have one? Anyway, while well, I'm still trying to remember, oh yeah, they have yeah. Well, and there's also the curse tokens. Who's my favorite god based solely on aesthetics? Well, you got to understand that I'm the wrong person to act because whenever a god wasn't looking as cool for me as it should, then I made the artists go back and redo it until it got better and better. So as soon as they reached the level I liked, then I stopped. And if, or if they went beyond to be even better, then I had to bring the other ones up to it. So so I'm the one that that for everything was was equal. You know that was kind of my thing. So anyway, in in hyperspace role playing game, you're in the space, you're traveling the space, you fight. Typically, other individual spaceships, and one of the ideas behind that is that in a space game, if everyone has like blasters and stuff, then like presumably one blaster bot, sh one blaster shoot can kill you, you know. So that makes it for really short fights. But if you have a spaceship, you can be battered, and then you can surrender, or you can escape in life pods. So you can actually have fights where you don't just die. And that's part of the deal there. So it also also by having a spaceship, you can be going all over the place and doing lots of stuff. And we have a novel almost ready, and it's probably going to be ready to go when Hyperspace is being released this summer. Um, the Hyperspace novel. And in fact, the main characters in it are um, following the uh, this this sequence where they're they're in a spaceship traveling, you know, through space solving problems. The problem they're trying to solve is there's a war between the Dossians and the Broodmasters. <laughs> and uh, Aurora, who's the main character in it, is trying to broker an agreement between them for who gets this this planetary system. And everyone trusts her to do it because she's a human, so she can't own the system no matter what. And uh, then there then there's trouble because the border. Sh anyway, there's lots of things happening. The guy that's writing the novel is a has like a bunch of published novels under his belt, and it, it'll be fun. So I think it'll be cool. 
And what else did I have to the God's War question? Each I don't think every pack does have figures. Um, the the secret one might not. Um, what type of uh, my favorite gods? Yeah, so for me, I don't really have a favorite. Alyssa, you got a favorite? Oh, jeez. Um, of the gods? I'm not sure. There's so many weird ones. Like, I like them for different reasons. I guess I like the new ones, Eater. I really like the Black Eater a lot. but uh, Black okay. Eater's cool. I like that beast or gore. She's cool, honest. too, yeah. Uh, you know what? I really like the Marangor, the dinosaur one. So yeah. I'm not saying Shargarth isn't the best god, Lincoln. I'm just saying which one looks coolest. Okay, so yeah, so Lucky Hester. So the the story is told that the the guy Aurora's running the ship. It's not her point of view. It's uh, the the chapters alternate between um, uh, Velistris the Zepseg, who is like the ship's hairdresser, and Hank is Handy the Vork, who helps take care of the engines. And of course, Velistris and Hank is Handy absolutely can't stand each other. So. Uh, and the, yeah, we have an arc planned for at least two more novels after this. So uh, and Cthulhu shows up in uh, some of them. So the Cthulhu so is pretty cool. And the and uh, and there's a, there's an overall arc and plans going on. Bobby Stegor is pretty cool. I like her a lot. <clears throat> and in fact, we like her so much that she is on the cover of the War Gods. So there you go. Uh, I want to show the cover box covers. I think they may have seen them already, but the box covers are cool. And then we'll let you go because we're it's eight fifteen and. Presumably, you have to put your baby to bed unless, you know, she already is. <laughs> no, dad's on that. Is she going to wake up at 2 a.m.? Is that her plan? Or No, she's pretty good about sleeping, so I don't need to worry about that. Man, Lincoln was not. <laughs> I like Vadris because Vadris is an overtly evil... There's cover art to share. Oh, from the... We don't have cover art for the Hyperspace novel yet, no. Okay. Cacodemon's a pretty cool sculpt. Which, which card? Oh, jeez. I don't remember which one. You don't know which covers are which? I think it is. Well, the colors, the covers, of course, okay. okay, this is the middle cover. This is the cover. Oh, wait, is it all of them? It's just cropped. Oh, it's cropped. Okay, so this is, the left-hand side are some of the secret gods overlapping into this, which won't be in the box. The right-hand side are some of the magic gods overlapping into this. But but the center thing we have Bobby Stegor there okay here's the secret gods and uh, so we have the, we have Anila and uh, the Black Eater and they're supposed to be like sending power to the fight because they want one of them to win <coughs> and uh, we don't know who they want to win but maybe they want them both to lose and then in the middle of the map we have uh, Bobby Stegor fighting the Storm Bull. Oh good grief! And you can see the 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 Black Eater is sending forth power and the. Moon God is getting ready to do something. Then, then on the right-hand side are the magic gods, and they're openly just firing lightning and, and fire and stuff in to do things. <laughs> so we have the moon, we have darkness, we have earth, we have storm, and on the on the right-hand side we have chaos and we have sky. So we uh, we don't have a sea or invisible god, but you can't have everything. Yeah, it's Cacodemon, look, and uh, uh, Shlana Arroy. Who someone said, why is Shlana Arroy shown as a sky god? And I said, because she is a sky god. So there's a lot of things that were that were true in the God's War that I was able to know about. There's a Cacodemon in Planet Apocalypse, and there's a Cacodemon in the God's War, and uh, Invisible God is I mean, well, he's there. He, sure, but this but it, but what I mean but his saint we don't show his saints, you know. Um and uh so yeah, uh, subset. You're Avalontiers, will the Harbinger be shipping in the next week? Um, are you? If you're in Australia, it's shipping right now. If you're in America, I believe it is in the warehouse and trying to come out the door. So if you can trick your 11-month-old into um, not having a birthday for a little while longer... Wait, why would you want to give a year old baby Cthulhu the Harbinger? That, that, that just doesn't make sense. And again, note the theme here of the uh, the sky is like hyper civilized, advanced, and the chaos is hollow and empty. It doesn't even have a head. And if we go back, storm god is all violence, and um, and uh, Barbarish Gore is ancient, primitive stuff. Civilized, not primitive. 
civilized but ancient civilizations. So if you look at what she looks like here, I mean, is that, I guess it's kind of Greek a little bit with the crest. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit Greek, but it's like old school stuff. And notice she doesn't even have iron. Um, and then the left hand, you have the mysterious moon. And of course, chaos, which is all just raw hunger. And by the way, the mountain in the back, that is a specific mountain in Glorantha. That is Skytop. So now you know. It is not a random mountain. That is sky top. On the left, by the way, you can see the moon in the sky. And if uh, Anilla here goes away, that moon will probably vanish. It's probably there because of her. So. What's going through Stormbull's hoof? Let's see. Okay. It might be one of the chaos... Um, fires from Cacodemon, who doesn't like Stormbull at a bit. It's a little hard to see. Uh, let's see, are you talking about the, 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 spike, the spike in the ground? I don't think it's going through its... Oh, they're in the front! Yeah. I think that's his, that's his buckle for like his, a, his like shoe buckle. Or something. Yeah. Well, you drew it, right? Or is this gray? Ken did the concept for it, and Gray painted this. I think that's part of his uh, outfit, you know. Yeah. It's on his uh, miniature. I want to know what's going through his claw there. On his on his left hand. The, uh, the, um, the hilt of the sword kind of pokes out. Oh, I see it. Yeah, so she's in front of his sword. That's kind of cool. She's jumping over it. Yeah, she's jumping over it. Okay, yeah, because she's fast. Oh. He's bigger and stronger. She's faster and more agile. Makes perfect sense. The Axe Maiden versus... Basically, it's a Sekhmet versus the, you know, Thor, so... Yeah, hold on. Tony's got me on the Yes, Stormbull is sometimes called Urox. Because I guess some people... He was always called Stormbull before, and then some people decided that they wanted... Storm will be... Oh, yeah, yeah, look, there it is. The nail, the nail is a weapon to make him able to hit you with. So, uh, or he's holding his toes. The idea is they they want they, they thought Stormble didn't sound Glorantan enough, so they called him Orox. But, uh, which is, of course, supposed to sound like Orox, the uh, extinct things. Any developments on Planet Apocalypse 2? Um, it's likely to add a new level of demons, the fifth level demons, and it's also likely to add an alternate set of um, Limbo first, second, and third level demons. So that's the, that's kind of what we're looking at for that. Okay, Stormbull. He's got two swords because he doesn't know how to parry. He only can attack. Okay, 820. You have 10 seconds to get one more question in before we close this up. As I've promised twice before. 8, 7, 6, 5. I'm probably counting too fast. If you do want to see the movie Island of the Living Dead, um, it's by Bruno Mattei. And while Island of the Dead is not easy to find, Bruno Mattei is endlessly rewarding. He's one of the worst directors in the history of the world, but all of his movie movies... Look good. Can I send you a tomahawk steak, Tony? Oh, yeah, thanks for reminding me. Uh, I think you will have to come and get one here because I don't think... I think it would rot in the mail, you know, so... I, sh I showed Tony a tomahawk steak and he was all sad that he can't get them in Chicago. He probably can if he looks hard enough. Uh, we need an invisible god... We have an invisible god figure! We have one in every box! Didn't you see it? <laughs> 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 Dry ice won't work, uh, Castor Troy, because it will burn the steak. Plus, I can't get a steak of the same quality, beef of the same quality as the fancy steakhouses here, because you don't they don't sell it in stores. So he literally has to come here and uh, and get it. Okay, so uh, I am done here. Thank you all, and uh, thanks for being here with us. End stream.